So, um, uh, last time we, we d defined what it means to be a cross product, so I just wanted to remind you that that definition, I wrote it here. Uh, so because most of, like, we're mostly focusing on, you know, r real numbers, uh, like so we might also want to use this notation, like the usual inner product and norm squared notation. So I just wanted to rewrite this uh, in that form. Uh, so remember, some, so this multilinear map is a cross product if, if the output vector is always perpendicular to all the inputs and uh, the norm of the output squared is the, is the same as the norm of the uh, veg products of the um, input vectors. And we, I actually also left an exercise. I said that like if, the, um, if these are all orthogonal, then basically this equality reduces to, and, and also if L is, alter, alter, is in an alternating map, this equality reduces to the norm product of each one of those things, right? Um, so I said last time that brown and gray Um, as a theorem in uh, 1967, which classifies all such cross products, uh, I mean all, all cross products in a vector spaces over uh, reals and I, I believe also over complex numbers. Um, so, um, okay, so th what they say is basically an R fold cross product. exists only in the following cases. So there are four cases. Um, one is, uh, well, maybe let's, let's introduce this notation. Let's, N is the dimension of the vector space, uh, and I guess that's that's all I need. So one, n is even, and r equals one. Two, n is arbitrary, and r equals negative uh, n minus one. Three, n equals seven, and r equals two. 4, n equals 8, and r equals 3. Um, so these are the only possibilities. Uh, does it, anybody have any guesses as to what the first one is? So it just takes a single vector and it satisfies these properties and the dimension has to be even. Uh, so what, 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 what would you call such an operator uh, operation? Any guesses? What is it? Complex. Yeah, exactly. So it's almost complex structure, actually. Uh, so this is, this just co corresponds to almost complex structures, uh, basically. Um, this here is also sort of well known. It's it's basically a special case of special case of the Hodge uh, star operator. Um, I mean, of course, you, if if you have a you know orientation and the you know, n minus one orthonormal vectors, there's a unique uh, nth vector. So this is that operation. And as you can see, these two are the only cases where like n, n is just like a fixed number. The, the, these two come, in, come as uh, infinite families. Whereas these two are just, you know, n equals seven and n equals eight. And for n equals seven, we have a two-fold cross product operation or just cross product. And for, for n equals eight, we have a three-fold cross product operation. Uh, so, um, so this, for this reason, these uh, operations are called ex exceptional cross product operations. And uh, so actually when you think about the usual cross product in three dimensional space, it actually falls into this category. So it's actually a special case of the Hodge star operator. Um, so, uh, so do you mean this, it always a real number in that situation? Uh, uh, also I I believe they they were also for complex numbers, but I'm I'm not I don't remember it 100%. Uh, I have to check. Um, yeah. So okay. So the, the, that's why you know these two sort of cases are very you know exceptional. They're special, and uh, 
because of these dimensions, like the octonians gives you a very like sort of nice way to sort of define these things. Uh, I mean, of course, this is like the dimension of octonians, and this is the dimension of the imaginary octonians. Um, so uh, let's define the twofold cross product operation uh, on imaginary octonians. Um, so u cross v to be, we just define this to be imaginary part of u times v for um, um, u comma v in imaginary octonians. Okay. Um, so what we, I mean, basically we just you know look at the usual product, but we restrict both the domain and the codomain to imaginary numbers. We just take the projection. And uh, let's uh, try to prove that this is a cr indeed a cross product, namely it satisfies these two uh, properties. Um, so so let's say proposition u comma v maps to u cross v is indeed a cross product operation. Like in, in this sense. Um, so of course, for for if if you use an imaginary octonian, then um, u bar is just negative u, right? Um, therefore, u cross u equals. Uh, imaginary u u, which is negative imaginary u bar u. And remember last time we said that u bar u is actually always a real number, I mean, a real octonian. So this, therefore, this must be zero. Um, so this actually shows that this map is alter alternating, uh, because if we plug in two of the same inputs, it uh, gives us zero. So by using uh, usual tricks, you can show that it's alternating. Um, um, so because of this, now it's enough to prove that, um, like, just well, for at least for the first equality, it's enough to prove that only the output is perpendicular to the first input, for example. The second one will be immediate from here. Um, uh, so we look at the inner product of u with u cross v, and uh, um, well, actually, okay. So, so um, this I, okay. I, I, actually, okay. This being zero, I'll, I'll just say that this follows from uh, one of the propositions that we that we wrote actually last time. Uh, because, um, well, first of all, you can assume that u and v are or orthogonal, okay? And uh, once they're orthogonal, we remember last time we wrote a, a proposition, we said that u times v has to be ima imaginary. So you can, so the cross product and the just usual product are, are the same. And this follows from that proposition now. Okay, I'll just say proposition from last time. And then um, the same uh, proposition also gives us that u cross v norm squared is, well, okay, so this is by definition the imaginary part of, I mean, norm squared of the imaginary part of uv. Um, and this is um, the norm squared of uv. Um, I mean, maybe I should say, okay, for orthogonal here, for orthogonal u comma v in imaginary octonians. Um, so, so again, for orthogonal u comma v, this is, these two are the same. The cross product and the usual product are the same. And this is 
u squared v squared. So, so we show that the map is alternating. So we, we uh, and again, the pro by the exercise from last time, now it's enough to check that the norm squared of the output is just, you know, satisfies uh, this equality for orthogonal vectors, remember? So it's, this now follows from that um, by the last exercise. Okay. Um, so that's why it's a, it's a cross product operation. Um, now, uh, using this cross product operation, we can define a three form. So we define, okay, we set phi in lambda three. Um, Um, right, let's say star lambda three of imaginary octonians, dual of the imaginary octonians, um, to be phi of u v w is equal to the inner product of u v cross uh, w. And actually, this this proposition uh, tells us that uh, basically this this phi is an alternating three form. Um, so it's an alternating three form by the previous proposition. Yeah, so um, that, that gives us that. I mean, of course, by the way, like uh, in this proof here, I, I, I only, I'm only doing it for orthogonal U and V, but that's, that's enough. It's easy to see that that's, uh, that's enough. You can easily extend this to um, um, like arbitrary uh, vectors in the imaginary octonians. So now where we're going is... Uh, I'm sorry, so here you assume the orthogonal or not? No, I mean, they, they can be any, like, three vectors in imaginary octonics. Yeah, so why it's alternating? Uh, so, I'm, I'm actually, like, when, when you uh, th think about it, like, this, this definition here, uh, well, okay, so the second condition is actually this thing. Yeah, yeah so, like, if, you, if the first two inputs are um, the same, yeah. it, it's zero. But this here shows that if the second, if the last two inputs are the same, then uh, it's zero, yeah. and that's enough to say that it's like alternating actually, because every permutation corresponds to, like, is generated by these two. This is a like a sort of classical exercise, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, where where we're going is. Uh, so now we define this uh, three form. Uh, we want to think about the stabilizer group of, of that thing in, inside uh, GL7R, or the general, general linear group of the imaginary octonians. Um, and we want to prove that actually it's the same group as the G2. So we, can, we, we have a different definition of G2. So first we'll prove that like G2 preserves the, um, well, the cross product is uh, G2 equivariant. So this is uh, what we want to prove. Would you remind me something? I, Wait, no. you know, using this alternative, you also conversely get the first slide at top. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, basically... But the, you said it follows some, some other thing. You, it's perfect and you cross V. So, okay, but last time we proved that for orthogonal U and V, uh, actually U times V is already imaginary, uh, so, well, is an element of imaginary octonians. Because what is imaginary? And orthogonal. and orthogonal, yeah. So the orthogonal, you also need orthogonality. So therefore, you this is actually in this case is equal to u cross v. Yeah. Um, and last time we said that multiplication by u, like if you just replace this by u, 
you see that you're left multiplying by u, and that's an orthogonal transformation again. So if you take these out, what you will end up with is one here. Okay, so this is like u times one, and one v and u one are uh, perpendicular, of course. Okay, yeah. Um, um, yeah, so uh, we want to prove that uh, the cross product is G2 equivariant. And actually, this is also, um, I mean, pretty, like just a few lines. Um, so this is, um, uh, well, the, the definition of cross product is just that, you know, of course, imaginary UV. But by the way, in the literature, you, you may see a, like a slightly different variations of this. Um, but uh, they're pr pretty much all equivalent. Uh, I mean, UV bar. Yeah, UV bar, yeah, yeah. Like, because if you, well, anyway, so you may see if, if you like s s something different, it can uh, differ at most up to sine, uh, but nothing else. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is by just the definition. And now, uh, A being an element of G2 commutes with the imaginary part. And because now this is a uh, algebra homomorphism, we have imaginary A of U times A of V. And therefore, this is just the cross product of AU cross AV. So this part is pretty easy. Uh, I mean, this direction. So what we, uh, I mean, well, G2 being, uh, so, I mean, the cross product being G2 equivalent is uh, pretty easy. As you can see. Uh, well, so it, it, remember, it fixes the uh, uh, real part. Yeah. So, so it actually only acts on the imaginary first part to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. So now uh, we want to prove the the. Okay. Well. All right. Let me so give this thing a name. The stabilizer of this thing a name. So definition. So let g upper phi, I'll just use this notation because I mean, this will be a temporary notation anyway. Um, be the stabilizer group of phi in GL imaginary octonians, which is isomorphic to GL7. Um, And we claim that G2 is a subgroup of um, this group first. Because the other inclusion is a little bit more complicated, I wanted to break it down into two propositions. Um, so, uh, what we need, need to show is just that it, we, we need to act with A, I mean, w with an element of G2 on this thing. And we just want to show that it, the result is uh, like, you will get the same thing again. So, um, so let A be in G2, um, which is in, remember, it's in SO, SO, well, okay, I'll just start writing SO7. Um, so A is in, uh, is in particular an, an element of SO7. So now I want to act with the A inverse um, on, on phi. And let's, well, phi? phi is over there. Oh, yes. Here, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, OK, by the way, this is, this is called, we will call this associative calibration. Uh, that's that's the name that we'll give to this alternating form. Because later there will be also capital phi. This one is the associative calibration. Okay, so that's just the name that we'll want to use for the other purposes. Okay, so I'm acting with the A inverse on this thing. 
UVW. So this is um, phi a u a v a w, um, which is by definition a u a v cross a w, and this is um, g equivalency uh, a times I mean, a of v uh, v cross w. I mean, by, by the way, like of course, like if I you know skip a definition or something like that, uh, please you know don't hesitate to ask. Like feel free to ask questions. Um, uh, so and and again, you know because it's an SO seven, we can remove A's basically. So and this is just phi of U V W. So we, this this part is you know again easy like this inclusion. Okay, so next. Uh, we want to prove the other inclusion, um, namely G phi is a subgroup of uh, G2. And uh, this will take a little bit of time, but not, maybe not too much. Okay. I mean, okay, maybe let's start here. So, G phi is a subgroup of G2. So, um, I mean, I first saw a very like similar argument in, in Robert Bryan's uh, paper, you know, uh, classical, uh, you know, annals paper. Um, so I, I'll be sort of imitating that. Um, but so f for here, uh, it, it's a little convenient. It's a little bit more convenient if we introduce these uh, like new names to our basis elements. So it's like we will call. Okay, the I one just E naught. E one will be our I. E two is J, and and so on. And like finally, E seven is L times K. Remember, these are just the generators from last time. I'm just giving them these names now. Um, so these are remember again. Uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a dual, dual action. What? Uh, this is this is. Um, I mean, this is the like natural in, induced action of dual representation. Like, uh, so if 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 you're acting on the vectors like this, you would act on the one forms or whatever by precomposing with the inverse. Uh, actually, like inverse of the uh, uh, map. Um, all right, I guess, yeah, I mean, because this is an element of SO7, I guess that corresponds to the transpose, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you have to put an inverse there, otherwise it's just, uh, not, doesn't define an action. Um, so that's not, then, then pull back. Oh, yeah, 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 it's, it's pull back, yeah, that's true, that's true, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't need the well, inverse. I mean, uh, the next one phi, just like this. Uh, a plus phi. <laughs> I mean, then this, it can get a little confusing because I mean, as soon as you, I mean, like as soon as you write like a a b acting on phi, this this is like um, I mean, you have to pay attention to the order. So you want to take so b phi. Like if you if you just put you know take a here and b there, yeah. I mean it's just like you know the the, the order sort of matters. That's why you want to put a inverse there. So so, so this is not, literally is not a, a pullback. It's a, you define well, the action. Uh, I mean of, of G two on the form. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, so it's, this is yeah, this is the like this is the dual, dual representation. That's true. I mean, yeah, I mean, in pullback, of course, like in general, uh, like it, your your map doesn't have to be. Pullback, you don't have yeah, yeah, inverse. yeah. You don't have the inverse. That's true. Like uh, be, because in general, pullbacks are defined for uh, you know not necessarily invertible maps. It can be from you know any space to any space, and in that case, all you can do is just um, yeah. It's it, okay. It's Pull back by the inverse, I guess. <laughs> We're pulling back with the inverse of the matrix. So, uh, I, I, it, that should be the same. It's yeah. not pull yeah. back by the inverse. If you put an inverse, you have an inverse there. Yeah, it's not pull back. It's defining yeah. a different so, so, when you convert by inverse, you pull back yeah. all the yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I if I act with a, I need to put inverses here. That's for sure. Like, uh, I have to have that. And that. Uh, okay, I'm not sure about the name then. Okay, but but it is what you see here. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's, like it's it's the it's the induced like dual representation. Okay, yeah. Um. Uh, I mean, without the inverses, it, it doesn't work. Like, I mean, or or you have to be careful. I mean, like you have to remember uh, the order. Um, okay. So this is the. So these are the standard uh, orthonormal bases of the octonians. Uh, so I. I so there's an, one nice equality here, so I will write it here. So note that this we have this equality where uh, volume is E1 through E7, and these are the dual bases. Um, okay, so I mean, it's actually not very hard to prove this e equality. Uh, you can, for example, just prove it for, I mean, we have the we have a concrete definition of phi, cross product, and all of these things. Um, so we can just plug in like this, one of the standard gen generators, like E1, or, uh, I mean, of course, it has to be imaginary oct uh, octonian. And then it's very easy to show, check this. And then using the, uh, using the fact that G2 is a subgroup of SO7, uh, and it also preserves phi, it's 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 easy to check that this uh, is this is true for all all vectors u and v. Um, again, using some polarization trick. Um, okay, so um, and and now what we'll do is we will act on this with the with, with an element of of g phi. Um, Okay, that's for A in G, uh, G phi. We have a, a pullback of U. Okay, so all of this thing. So this A is acting on uh, seven forms on both sides. Um, and this, this action becomes a U, so phi contra so, um, uh, a phi contracted with a U, which a V, I mean a phi contracted with a V, 
veg um, a phi. Well, with a pullback, all right. I mean, with this notation, all right. And um, this here is just acting on the seven part, uh, and that becomes uh, just the determinant of the inverse of a. Uh, well, okay. There's also six times the inner product. By the way, uh, so um, right now I'm proving proving this for for this specific phi that we defined. Okay, uh, so this is not exactly the same as the what, what you see in uh, Brian's paper. Um, we will also later talk about like ge general like phi's. Okay, so we get that, um, and then this gives us, okay, because this is, you know, A is in the stabilizer group of phi, this just becomes A, uh, phi contracted with AU, wedge uh, phi contracted with uh, AV, wedge phi equals all of this. Um, and this here is, now again, we will use this equality here. So this gives us just uh, the six times inner product of AU comma AV times the volume form. This is equal to six times uh, the determinant of A inverse um, times UV, inner product of UV and the volume form. And now this walling form, you know, of course, this, the space of walling forms is one dimensional. So this gives us um, just that uh, the inner product of AU with AV is equal to uh, determinant of A inverse UV. Okay, so this is true for all U and V, okay? So in particular, we will apply these to like the standard basis, I mean, basis vectors of the imaginary Hamiltonians, okay? Uh, like all possible pairings. So in particular, we have um, the inner product of A, E, I with A, E, J is Okay, I want to leave some space here. Um, is the determinant of A inverse times the inner product of EI, EJ. Right, this is true for all I and J. Um, but now I want to look at these things as like two by two matrices and I will just take their determinant of both sides. So I'll, I'll put a determinant now. Like this is a seven by seven matrix. We're looking at the determinant of this uh, seven by seven matrix. And actually now uh, this, this equality, because we choose the standard orthonormal basis, uh, this, is, this multiplication here is actually, I mean this, this matrix that we formed here is actually determinant of, I mean it's just A transpose A. So we're looking at the determinant of A transpose A on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, well, this is just the identity matrix multiplied by this constant. So we get seven, seventh power of this thing. So it's negative seven overall. And of course, this is determinant squared, determinant of A squared. So overall, we have determinant of, of A to the nine is equal to one. And uh, this, this just implies that because we're working over real numbers, determinant of A is one. Um, so we have determinant of A equals one. So now we're going back here, this implies that um, uh, A is an element of O7. Well, in fact, SO7, because the determinant is one, like using this equality here, because if, you, if that's one, it's just an orthogonal transformation. Um, and now we can uh, prove, uh, we can, we can 
show that uh, the, the, this, this, the elements of this thing are automorphisms of the octonians. Right? So now that we have these sort of background for, for, for these transformations. Um, okay. Um, all right, so, so now we can look at this inner product, U with A cross, I mean, AV cross AW. So this is by definition phi of U, AV, AW. Oops. And that's uh, phi A, A inverse, U, AV, AW. And because A is, you know, auto, is a stabilizer of phi, we can remove all three A's from the left. So this is um, well. Okay, let's just write phi. Um, phi of a inverse u v w, um, and this is now a inverse u v cross w. So this is. A, uh, uh, sorry, if you multiply both sides from left by A, it's, we get U comma A of V cross W. So, so this, this part shows us basically that like A respects the cross product, which is almost the um, octonian multiplication, right? It's just the part of the octonian multiplication that lives inside the imaginary part. Um, I mean, so we, we can't just prove the whole thing all at once. So we're sort of trying to show that uh, this 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 group like preserves the some parts of the octonian multiplication, basically. So we we. But you're after you prove that this proposition, you done it there, right? Well, no, this 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 stopped here. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but this is still going on. <laughs> yeah, th th this will take a little bit of time. Like we still have a little bit more more work to do, but we're almost done. Like because. This, this last thing we, we wrote down shows that, again, like the, this, this group, G phi, preserves the imaginary, pro like the cross product, basically. It's a, the cross product is uh, G phi equivariant, which means that, I mean, because again, you know, because cross product is just the imaginary, like restriction of the octonic multiplication to the imaginary part. Um, so we, we, we sort of, we, this A preserves that, uh, well behaves with respect to that multiplication mostly, right? That's what we showed basically in the last part. Um, okay, so therefore, okay, um, AV cross AW is AV cross W. And now for For ortho orthogonal u and v in imaginary octonians, um, we have a u v equals. This is again just to, um, like a pretty much immediate application of this conclusion that we have a time a of u v equals a um, imaginary u v which is a of u cross v, which is a u cross a v. And this is um, imaginary part of a u times a v. But however, okay, this is just a u a v. Okay, so we'll discuss this part again, but, but what we're saying is a of u times v is a of u times a of v. Right, so that's what we want basically, and uh, from here, basically, it will be very easy to like prove, like complete this, like complete, completely say that A is a uh, algebra homomorphism. This is the main uh, part basically. Uh, you just have to also consider the real parts and uh, the case where it's not orthogonal. But uh, this is the most difficult part. Okay, so this last part is true because. Because we picked u and v to be orthogonal, and a is an orthogonal transformation, so a u and a v are also orthogonal. 
So therefore, their, uh, their product is, again, imaginary. So that, that's why we have this equality here. I mean, just like we have this equality here, we have this equality here. It's, it's the same uh, proposition that we discussed last time. So, I mean, so basically I'll stop the proof of this here. Uh, I'll not complete the rest. Um, wait, 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 how much time do I have? 20 minutes. 20? Okay, good. Um, so let's just state, um, let's just say that G5 and um, G2 are the same now. So you can, uh, instead of defining G2 as, a, G2 as a, the um, automorphism group of octonians, you can, you can have this, uh, some kind of a three form, and then say that, uh, I mean this, well in this case we're saying that this, it's the stabilizer group of this specific three form that we define, which we called associative calibration. Okay? But we will also discuss to what generality we can sort of uh, pick an arbitrary uh, three form, uh, like shortly. Okay, so, but before we uh, move, move on to that discussion, I just want to quickly write down the threefold cross product operation um, because that was also one of the exceptional products in the list. And it also leads to the, um, a definition of spin seven, the, the brother of the big brother of the uh, group G2, right? So, So we define a threefold cross product operation. On O as follows. So U cross V cross W, this is the notation. This is not taking cross like the twofold cross product twice or anything like that. This is just like a single operation that takes three inputs. Uh, this is just, again, just a notation. Uh, so one half u v bar uh, w minus uh, w v bar u. Um, so, yeah, this, this is, I mean, we'll, again, we will not really discuss its details. Uh, if you want, you can think about this, this the, you know, properties of this product. But let me just remind you that the octonians were not associatives. Associative is not an associative algebra, right? You can't just change the order of the parentheses. So it's uh, this order of the parentheses is important. Uh, so if you if you want to work with this, if you want to play with this cross product, uh, you have to pay attention to these parentheses. Bar is on the second factor, right? U the bar. Yeah. So yeah, the middle. Yeah. So I mean, if yeah, yeah, it's the second, second. Yeah. Um, and you know, using this. Just like we define phi, the associative calibration, we can define a capital phi. It's a four form on the octonians um, to be, okay, it takes z, u, v, w and sends it to the inner product of z, u cross v cross w. So just like before basically, right? And uh, so this is called Cayley, the Cayley calibration. Cayley calibration form. Uh, I mean, if we have time, we will, maybe in two days, we will talk about why we're calling these things K, uh, calibration forms. Okay, uh, and, and from here, actually, you can define the group spin seven R to be the stabilizer group of, of this Cayley calibration. But as, or, or, it's a little bit more complicated to uh, show that it's equal to its, the, its usual uh, definition. So specifically, we define it to be the uh, stabilizer group of phi in GL8 R. So in, in uh, both here for this definition, this this R 
And for the definition of G, uh, the G phi, the real numbers are important. If you, if you drop that, it's no longer the stabilizer group inside GL, uh, GL8R or GL7R. Yeah. But um, it's not super important right now. Um, but, but what I'm saying is just remember that this, this definitions, in, this, in these definitions, it's, the real numbers are important. Uh, so it, for complex numbers, you have to do a little bit more things. Um, okay, I'll, I'll just say that um, um, spin 7 acts transitively on uh, S7, uh, the 7 sphere, um, and the stabilizer group is, is G2. And from here, again, using uh, homotopal long exact sequence, or like from just from this vibration, you, you know, there are a few things we can say about these groups, uh, about, about the spin seven. So for example, it's 21 dimensional. Um, it's compact. Again, it's two connected. Um, so yeah, finally, it also acts on like three frames in R R8 transitively, um, and but basically, like G2 sits inside of this as the stabilizer group of the, of the you know just the identity element. Um, so from even just from there, you, you can actually get a lot of information about spin seven. Okay. Does this have the same? Does with double cover? Yes, yes, yes. This is the double cover of SO7, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you define actually in that way, actually, give you the same equivalent definition. What is it? So you said it defines the spin 7 to be yeah. stable, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is equivalent. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this gives you an equivalent definition, yeah, yeah to, to being a double cover of SO7, yes. Yes. I mean, you, you get an isomorphic group, yeah. What is it? Tra transitive action? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, so basically you can think of it this way. Like, as I said, like the, if, you, if you sort of fix the first vector, uh, like G2 is a, sits as a subgroup, so which already acts on like tra two frames. And like this, this because we said that spin 7 also has a, uh, a transitive action on the f first vector. Uh, I mean, this, this is just like a, I mean, it's not a, like a formal proof or anything, it's just um, it acts on the uh, unit octonians transitively, um, and then the other two vectors, you can get the other two vectors by, by an action of G2, basically. You can sort of think of it that way. But uh, um, let's see. Is there, a, is there a description of G2? G2 is a orthogonal. U V W such that W is perpendicular. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so. Yeah, if you have that description, then it will be easy to see. Well, yeah, that that that's true. That's true. Uh, um, is that? I mean, uh, uh, there must be, but I, I right right now I don't I don't remember it. Uh, uh, I mean, basically. If you don't remember, maybe you should just tell what this action is exactly. Oh, I mean, uh, well, but I mean, I mean, of course, this is like I define it to be a subgroup of GL eight R already. So, so, it, um, so it's just usual, like you know, linear, like a Orthogonal. matrix. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. This sits inside S O eight. Like, uh, it's a consequence of the definition. Because of the text three frames. Mm -hmm. okay, so then, uh, he asked whether this action is transitive on the three planes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is, but I, I don't um, have an easy and look or any, any reason off the top of my head right now. And the stabilizer of this action is what? Uh, three on, on three frames? Yeah. Huh. St 
So that should yeah, actually okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's three sphere again. Mm -hmm. uh, that I can see from like again from the G two picture actually because uh, you just take the you know standard you know th first three frame yeah because it fixes the first one it's actually an element of G two then it fixes the other two so it's like because we know how to express G two I mean what the stabilizer of the G two is when it acts on two frames which is S three it'll be the same thing for I mean. Uh, that will just give us uh, S3 again. Yeah. What? There are computing stabilizers of the section. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, so, yeah, I mean. Because of C7 uh, fixing three frames. So, well, you said that. Uh, yeah, so using this identification that's yes, 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 yes. Yeah, like the stabilizer group of the identity element is, is uh, G2 inside spin 7. Then, because you want to fix a three frame, so uh, l let me write this a little bit more clear clearly. So you take uh, spin 7, uh, you act on, um, well, I mean, okay, V38. So you want to compute the stabilizer group, so you can just check um, the set of A's that will take, you know, uh, one I J to one I J. But as soon as it takes one to one, um, Uh, A is an element of G2. So now we're, what we're looking at is actually the same thing as A in G2 as a subgroup of spin 7 such that A takes I, J to I, J. And now this, the fact that this is S3 follows from our discussion for, for G2. So, but, but actually this is like a nice demonstration of the, of the fact that uh, basically you can get these, like answer some of these questions about spin seven uh, using actually G2, like what we know about G2. Uh, it's, it's not very hard to, uh, well, maybe not always, but in general, it's sort of easier to uh, answer questions. I mean, generalize some of the facts about G2 to spin seven. Um, yeah. Okay, so if there are no uh, further questions, now I want to define the so called non degenerate reforms. Oh, by the way, how much time do I have? Five minutes? Okay, let's, let's try to quickly define that. Um, um, so we, we take an alternating three form, let's call this beta now, because we sort of reserve phi for the phi that we defined earlier. Um, in lambda three, V star, where V is, a seven, is like isomorphic to R seven. In fact, this part also, we can also talk, discuss this part for C7. Like again, you can, we can use complex numbers, but let's just uh, for now f uh, fix, uh, so just use the real numbers. Uh, we, we call this, it's called non degenerate. If, uh, does anybody know what the definition of being non degenerate is? is for three forms. So basically what, what you want is uh, whenever you plug in uh, linearly independent vectors, two linearly independent vectors, 
there should be a third one so that the result, I mean, when you plug in all, plug in all three of them, the result is non-zero. So for all linearly independent um, u comma v, there exists w such that beta u v w is non-zero. Okay. And uh, the phi that we define satisfies this, so that's an example. The associative calibration is an ex example. Um, So we'll think about like what what kinds of uh, non-degenerate three forms there are on, on a given seven-dimensional space over real numbers or complex numbers. Uh, there aren't that many, and actually uh, that is deeply connected with the number of octonian algebras. So actually, what that means is uh, over real numbers there will be only two sort of distinct ones and all over complex number, there's a, there's a unique one, actually. Um, but, so let's, let's just discuss the orbit of phi first. The orbit of phi under GL7R is, well, okay. is open, okay. So we prove that the stabilizer group of phi is uh, G2 and is 14 dimensional. So the orbit space phi mod out by G2 is 49 minus 14, which is 35 dimensional. But um, lambda three V star is also 35 dimensional. And of course this is a homogeneous space, so it has to be, a, it has to be an open uh, orbit. And like basically, as I said, there are two orbits of non-degenerate three forms. Um, and to any given um, non-degenerate three form, we can associate a unique metric and a volume form. Uh, that's actually very important, so maybe uh, I, I want to start that tomorrow like the f first thing, as the first thing, right? So I, how, how much time do I have? I mean, a couple of minutes. A couple, well, okay. So, yeah, let's... So let's just... Uh, I mean, yeah, so ba basically whenever you have a non-degenerate non, non three form, there's a unique way to uh, well, there's a way to uh, get a metric and a volume form uh, uniquely. So, um, th th and tomorrow, like the first thing we will discuss, will be that. And this this actually sort of reflects the fact that uh, this perhaps is not very surprising when you think about the fact that uh, the stabilizer group of phi is G two. And we actually proved that this is inside SO7. So if you take a G2 triple, uh, so th that sort of defines a unique, that sort of extends uniquely to a, um, well, OK. So that will be inside SO7, so that, that th there will be a unique metric uh, that is sort of compatible with that. I mean, we will see the details of that tomorrow very clearly. I mean. So I'll stop here.